Oh, let me turn off chess base. I don't have to cheat this stream. Okay, so what I decided to do since it was alliterative is show my favorite games that I'm trying to show games I've never shown before. And probably of the eight games, you've seen bits of one or two of them. Um, but you've never seen any of the whole games. Never. You've only seen bits. And I think six of them, you've never seen any of it. So um, I found games between 1982 and 1990. So the f And then I put my age next to my name in each game. So you can see how old I was. Okay, so this game was played in Michigan when I was 12, maybe at the Michigan Open. And I remember the end of this game, but I won't tell you why. But you'll know why when I show you the end of the game. Usually when I was like 10, 11, 12, 13, I may remember that I played somebody, but I don't remember the end of the game, but this one I do. And I've never shown this game. Now remember, I'm 12, so be nice. This, you know, I'm not playing so well. Although I haven't done a game report on any of these games. So we'll see how badly I played when I was a kid. Uh, this is in chronological order. And so I'm 12 and then and so forth. In the last game, I'm 20. Okay. Now, the Michigan Open games, the Michigan Open is always held the end of August, beginning of September. So my birthday is September 6th. So if I'm 12, I'm going to be 13 in like a few days or... Sometimes it even goes over my birthday. I think, I think Labor Day is on my birthday this year. I think so. And then if it's a U.S. Open game, that's in August and my birthday is in September. So when it says an age, I'm going to be older pretty soon. Oh, no, he didn't. Subscribed. 1982? That, that's, that's when this game was played, right? Yeah. Your handle is Ono1982 and this game was played in 1982. Frankly, delicious. Yeah. So when I was 12, I was 2,000. So I was at least 2,000 this game. I don't think I was ever 2,100 until I was 13. So I must have been in the 2,000s. Okay. So I'm white. I used to play the English a lot as a kid. And then I never played it. The only thing interesting about this game is the end. Okay, it says I'm better. It says I'm playing well, too. Like, the engine likes what I'm doing. So I'm playing well so far. It says I'm plus one. Man, it likes a lot of the moves that I'm making. I guess I was good when I was 12, and then, then it all went downhill. Put it in H. It doesn't say that's horrible. It just says it's not the best, but it still likes White's position. Never play F6. Man, I didn't realize that always retreat when I was 12. All the best moves are retreating moves, but I played here, which doesn't make a lot of sense because his knights come in f5. So, not sure why I did that. And I castle. Wow. I'm still better here? Okay, now it says equal. Yeah. Now, if. Yeah, always retreat. Okay, that's actually a reasonable move. Okay. Now, he played king f7, which is nonsensical. All right, now, if you doubt that I was 12 years old when this game was played, you will not doubt it anymore after you see my next move. This is a move I would play today in a bullet game. Maybe in a blitz game, I doubt it, but never in a slow game, but I was 12. So, yeah, that's right, kangaroo. Yeah. G4. Yeah, the engine says it's okay. Still says it's equal. Okay, now he made a very bad move. Bishop takes C3. That's a terrible move. Yeah, now I have his two bishops and his best pieces is gone. Yeah, now I have a big advantage, it says. I played C5, which the engine doesn't mention, and now says it's equal. But again, I was 12, so that's, that's how I played. Bishop c4. Yeah, now he can play b5 and he's better. I mean, I, I b5 is just really obvious. 
but he played this, and I play bishop here. He played rook e4, which is a mistake. So when I played bishop f4, I knew that rook e4 was a mistake, although he's still fine. But I'm sure that he didn't see bishop take c7. But actually, this is fine for him. Queen c8. He can't take my bishop because d6 check wins his queen. And then queen d3. He took a check. That's correct. Bishop g3 is correct. And once again, he should play b5, and he's better, or king g7. He played king g7. Now it says it's equal. Thanks uh, mainly, frankly, for subscribing. Not enough RARs today. It's true. Pick a Huna burger. That's that Hawaiian burger joint. Thanks, R.A. Kelly, 999. Yeah, uh, R. Kelly loves 12-year-olds, if you know what I mean. Yeah, R.A. Kelly, different. Okay. Um, Rook A.E. 1. Yeah, it says that I have a bad position here. Bishop F5. Queen E2. It still says I have a bad position. Rook E4. And then I sack my queen. This isn't why I remember the game. Like, even now, I would rather have white here. And the engine says black's like 1.5 up. This seems difficult for black to me, but all right. Okay, that move is not the best. It still says he's better. Okay, that move is triple question mark, and now he's lost. It's funny because that move seems pretty natural. Like, if you never play rook e8, how are you ever going to get your rook active? Yeah, it says after queen c6, he's better. And after rook d8 or f5, it's equal. I would definitely want white here, like now. Do bishops. His pieces are all terrible. I have a pass pawn on the sixth rank. That's, okay, now it says it's equal no matter what he does. It says all his best moves are equal, but I'd rather have white. This is a blunder, and now I'm winning. Takes, takes. Rook d1. Yeah, now it says I'm plus seven. Oh, damn. Yeah, if he plays queen d7, I play bishop e6. And then, as Joel Benjamin would say, it's a girl. He double attacked me. That's actually a mistake. I should play bishop b3. In fact, why I didn't play bishop d3, b3, I don't know. Why, why didn't I play bishop b3? Why did I play here? That's dumb. Oh, then he blundered. Yeah, he has to play queen d7 here. Bishop b Oh, I'm still winning after queen d7. So he has to play knight h6, and then after d7, play knight f7. And then I win his knight, and the engine says I'm much better. That's got to be winning a rook and two bishops against that bad king. He played this crazy move. Yeah, that's just totally crazy. Yeah, now I played really nice move. Now, there's two moves that incredibly win incredibly but i played the nicer one and the you know i played the one you wouldn't see because the obvious move is bishop d6 but i my move is not bishop d6 and i still save my pawn jdh 1217 subscribed that's correct whiplash and centipede yeah rookie one yeah yeah, he can't take my pawn because bishop b5 or bishop d1 check wins the queen. Yeah. And now he made a mistake. But if he plays king e8 on plus 8. Yeah. Okay, and this is why I remember the game. Because of this next move. That I remember playing this move. And this is the only time in my life in a slow game I've done this, I think. Yeah, in a slow game, this is the only time I've done this. And I've played a lot of slow games. I've probably played 4,000 slow games, USCF or FIDE rated. But I've never done it. That's right, BDG48266. I just did it because it was funny. It's, it's the same as making a queen. Yeah, I made a bishop. Three bishops. What else? The engine says making a bishop or a queen is the same. It's equally good. 
And obviously, if he takes either way, I win his queen with a bishop check. Um, yeah. So he resigned here. That's right. Yeah. Naka would have made a knight. Right. You're asking me when I was 12 if I asked the director for an extra bishop? No, I think I just walked around and found a bishop, then I gave it back. That's probably what I did. Yay. Yeah, that was a slow-rated game. All right, let's see how badly I played when I was 12. When I was 17, I had some very good beer. With a fake ID, my name was Brian McGee. I stayed up listening to Queen when I was... Well, I played 94.1. And he played 84.1. Uh, one blunder, one mistake, one inaccuracy, zero missed wins, 18 best moves. Okay, good. I guess if I'm 12 and I'm playing 94, that's about all I can ask for. They didn't have 12-year-old grandmasters when I was 12. When I was 12, I was considered pretty good, and I was like 2,000. Man, harsh. Now if you're 2,000 and you're 12, they won't even take your application at McDonald's. Like, get out of here. You know, because you're 12. Eh... Uh, Let's see. 74%. It was a chess tournament, so you just walk around and find a bishop. Yeah. Da -da -da. Dun -da -dun -da -da. And pen or pencil? No, nobody uses a pencil. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> it's better than computers played then? In 82? A computer played at the U.S. Open and was over. It was about two thousand something. So yeah, that's like the best computer in the world in '82 was probably slightly better than me, maybe close. Yeah, it's close. I played like a computer when I was twelve. As long as you know the computers. Yeah. Okay, next game I'm also twelve, and this was played at the Michigan Open, and. This game I announced mate out loud, and I was wrong. But when I say I was wrong, I assumed my opponent wouldn't give all his pieces away, that he would avoid that, which he did. He said, I don't see it. And then we kept playing, and then he said, okay, now I see it. He was, you know, he was a good sport. Now, you may recognize, what if you make a mistake in your notation? <sighs> Terrible. Okay, block. No, I'm talking about the, the supercomputers, Bonarici. They were also 2000 something. Okay, so um, let's see in the audience who the smartest is or who uses Google the quickest. Why do you know the name Jim Marfia? I mean, you don't know the name Jim Marfia, but if you did know the name, why would you know it? Let's see if anybody knows who he is. Because I Googled it, yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> I Googled it, that's right. <laughs> the door is Jimmy Hoffa, fries, no clue. Terrible. Okay, if... Right, if, if, if you look, if you own a copy of Zurich 53, the famous Bronstein book, if, if you open it up now... It'll say translated by Jim Marfia because he speaks Russian. He's not Russian. He's born in Michigan, um, lived in Michigan his whole life, but he speaks Russian. I guess he took Russian in school. I don't know. Um, so, and he's like 2200 at chess. So he translated some books from Russian into English. Zurich 53 being the most famous. Yeah. That's right. Translated by Jim Marfia. Yeah, and he was about 2200. Uh, and I was, you know, 2000 something, you know, good, good. Never looked at the translator. Boo, boo. Yeah. Okay. So this is one of my favorite games from when I was a kid. It was a Petrov. I used to play the Petrov a lot. All right. Still theory. And I played check and he put it in F, King F1, confusing the audience. 
All right. So it says we're playing pretty well so far. It's not complaining. It says black is fine. It likes knight c6. Okay, it says it's about equal. Pretty good game so far. It doesn't like that move. Okay, now it says it's okay. I could play knight d5 also. Still about equal. It doesn't like bishop a6 check. Now it says he's still better, but he's he's up a pawn, but obviously his game looks a little silly. Yay, I was young then, so I played aggressive. Let's see, who's texting me? My daughter is really nice, blah, blah, blah. Oh, that's good. My daughter's texting me about her college stuff. Good, good. Yeah, she's going to go to Wayne State University in Detroit, where I went, my dad went, Wes went. Okay, so it says he's up a pawn, and I have not as much compensation. I put it in H, that's good. Always retreat. Okay, still says he's better. Doesn't like that move. It wants him to play bishop e5. Doesn't like that move. Wants me to take with a pawn. Okay, it still says he's better. Likes that. Likes that. Says that's good. That's good. And that's a mistake. And now I'm better. You should take my bishop, it says. Now it says it's equal. I want me to play queen f6. Put it in h. Okay. So in this position, he should play either h4 or king g2 and it's equal. And this is where he made the losing move. Oh, he did play h4. I'm sorry. It's the next move was the losing move. Yeah. Now he should play h5. But he played rook d5, which is a blunder. Um... If he plays h5 or queen takes c7, it's about equal. Yeah. Now it's black to play and win. Go me. Uh, Roger Federer for the win subscribed. Yeah. At the Rensen. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so I played queen h4, exclamation mark. And the reason he played rook d5 was to play rook h5. Yeah, but that loses. Although, after queen h4, he's losing anyway. Once he says a, he must say b. Now, for somebody 2200, this is a bad mistake, rook d5 to h5, uh, for psychological reasons. So what I mean is, if you play rook d5 and your opponent takes on h4, that means they saw rook h5 and they're not afraid of it. Or it means they didn't see rook h5 and, you know, I shouldn't be 2,000 if I didn't see rook h5. A lot of people assume their opponent blundered when they set a trap. But if somebody falls into your trap, it could be they just saw more than you. Now here, I only have one move. If I, if I don't play the winning move, I can resign. So he should have analyzed this. And if he'd analyzed it for like two or three minutes, he wouldn't have played rook d5 to h5. On the other hand, he could have been in time trouble. I don't remember. He's in time trouble. I barely blame him. Uh, Hypernator 3000 subscribed. Yeah. Did you see rook a4? What? Yeah, so I played this and I said mate in seven. And it's only mate in seven if he plays the way I thought he would play. If he doesn't want to get mated, he can just lose his g-pawn with check and his rook and, you know, resign. But, yeah, it's not mate in seven. So take, take. Now he could play king e2 and just lose. I take his pawn with check. I take on h5. Ridiculous. So he plays here if he wants to be up a rook. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, if he plays king c6, queen b6 is mate. Yeah, and then he said, now I see it. So if he plays a king here, queen d6 is mate. King here, queen b6 is mate. If 
but as king a5, I can go here, then here, or I can go here, then here. Probably I would have gone here, then here, because that then his king's on a6, that's funnier. So in this position, he resigned. Hooray for me. Bork, runtime error in chess space. Okay. Isn't chess space closed? I don't think chess space is closed. Go chess space, ruining my stream. Chess space isn't even open. Oh, damn. Thanks, chess space. Um, yeah. Ben doesn't understand Rook A4 Sage. All right. Yeah, somebody needs to be banned. Yeah, because a lot of the books I read when I was a kid were from, you know, 100 years ago and people announced mate then. D A F L or one or I zero zero subscribed. Hooray. No, nobody announced me when I did. I just didn't know. Yeah. All right. Let's see how badly I played. The more badly I played, the more money I get donated for lessons. I've never analyzed these games with, you know, like with engines and game reports. So very embarrassing. Man, I see a lot of red. The red's his though. So. I played 89.3 and he played 76.7. Zero mistakes, zero blunders, zero missed wins. I'll take it. And he made two blunders and one inaccuracy. All right. I'll take that. I'm not going to complain too much. Now, this game, you may have seen the game, maybe, because I've shown, and you may have seen the end of the game. I've probably shown the end of the game at least five times. This was played in the 82 U.S. Open. Funnily enough, funnily enough, Jim Murphy, the guy that I just beat, wrote a book on this tournament and included this game. You can, I think you can still buy the book. I don't know. It's written in 82. Trying to learn 200 cents to do's. Hooray. Yeah. Yeah, I was 12, but I, I turned 13 next month. Yeah, it's funny, Jim Marfia wrote a, a book on this tournament. It's a tiny book. It has a white cover, and it says 1982 U.S. Open. If you have that book, which you don't, then my game with him is... Uh... Yeah, okay. So I was white. Yeah, and the idea of 92 is to try to trap the knight. Oh, give me the knight. Yeah, knight c5 is not a good move. Uh-huh, two knight. So, you know, obviously when I'm 12, I'm going to play e6, but the engine says e6 is the best move. So, you know, but obviously I'm 12. Like in Blitz and Bullet, I'm playing e6 without thinking because thinking is not my strong suit. But when I'm 12, I'm playing it in slow chess too. Yeah, the engine likes my position a lot. Yeah, it, it prefers knight f3 to bishop d3. Wow, it says g5 is the best move. God damn. Man, if my opponent played g5, I'd be pretty happy. But the engine says that's the best, and it's equal. g5? Wow. Yeah, he played a normal move. Ridiculous. Still wants to play g5. Now it likes white. Good, good. Yeah, I'm not as bad as I play. Doesn't like that. Doesn't like queen b6. Likes that. Yeah, likes the way I'm playing. Yeah, now he made a mistake. He took. He decided to win a pawn again. That loses immediately. But it says I'm plus two here. Yeah, my knight defends my queen for those of you who are confused, which is most of you. It says you should get, take my queen because it knows that here I'm going to win. So then he's only down a piece. Yeah, it like, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a high number this game. I like the way I played. Yeah. So I've shown this position on my stream and in videos before, but usually I didn't show the part leading up to it. Uh, oh, yeah, I've analyzed this game. I do have that book. Good job. Chess Pros subscribed. 
Chess bra, I played this game before you were born. Rawr. 1982 U.S. Open, my first U.S. Open in St. Paul, Minnesota. Now, let me tell you a funny story. The U.S. Open in the 70s and 80s, sometimes it was really strong and sometimes it wasn't. This was easily the weakest U.S. Open of all time. Easily. Easy. 82 U.S. Open. They had over 500 participants, but there were only two grandmasters. Ow. The grandmasters were Bizgeyer and Soltis. So the first game I showed, I'm showing games when I was 12. I played 94, and the second game I played 89. So far, so good. This game I probably played better. And then, and then there were like, I don't know, three IMs. Very weak tournament, but I was 2,000. All right, so this is the end of my game with this 1,800. Mm -hmm. I'm, 2000, I'm 12 years old. Yeah. This was in St. Paul, Minnesota, your favorite city. Mm -hmm. Hey, there's Chess Brown. Have you been there? Yes, but only like briefly. Yeah. I didn't do anything there. What was Bizguy rated in 1982? Chess bra, Bizguy in 82 was old. So, I mean, it's hard to believe, but it's true. No, I mean, probably Soltis was 2520 USCF, and probably Bizguy was 2450 USCF. Those were the two highest rated players in this tournament, the US Open. Now, the reason I'm saying the 82 was the weakest, 83 was the strongest. All right, for a trillion dollars, go Karen, we need the money. Where was the 83 US Open for chess? I'll give you the state and you Can give I me the city. State? Yeah, California. Not gonna help yeah, very I don't much. Know. Pasadena. All right. Now, <laughs> Pasadena, California US Open had like 20 grandmasters. And what was supposed to happen, if you remember, since most of you weren't born, you don't remember, there was supposed to be a candidates match between Kasparov and Korshnoi in 1983. And the Soviet Union said, Ish don't think so, because they forgot they were Russians. They thought they were Germans. And uh, Korshnoi showed up, and Kasparov didn't. They knew Kasparov wasn't showing up because the Soviets refused to play in America. And Koltsinowski was the arbiter, and Kasparov didn't show up for game one, so he just forfeited him for the match. He said, well, he's not going to show up ever. He's not here. I'm not going to have, I'm not going to forfeit him, you know, five games and wait. No. Okay, so Korshnoi was working with Yasser, and Korshnoi and Yasser decided to play in the U.S. Open because they were there. And they took a half point by in round one because it was sort of coinciding. And when I say it was there, it wasn't where the U.S. Open was. It was somewhere else that, where the playing site was. I don't know. Anyway, so they played in the U.S. Open. And then a lot of people played. People who were going to watch the Korshnoi Kasparov match. As you all know, in 84, the match was rescheduled. Now, I think if I was Korshnoi, I would have a good argument that I don't have to play that match. I won the match. But Korshnoi's like, yeah, all right. So Korshnoi played Kasparov in 84 in London, and Korshnoi won the first game with Black. And, and then I, then, no, then, then it was bad. By the way, as, a, as, a, you know, as an aside, as you know, in the World Trade Center, which Adon played Kasparov, I believe 1995, but I could be wrong. Uh, I'm not wrong. Mm -hmm. They drew the first eight games, and then Anand won game nine. So Don was ahead, mm -hmm. and then that is it. Mm -hmm. Then he got beat, like, I mean, like, nobody ever got beat worse. He lost, like, four or five games after and didn't win any. So I don't know what happened after game nine. God damn. Yeah, the 83 U.S. Open was really strong. Thanks trying not to learn for the sub. I haven't seen you in a while. Mm -hmm. And now, let me explain something to you guys. The U.S. Open is always in August, because I said so. And occasionally the USCF has a meeting and says, what's the worst site for the US Open? And they have a long talk and they figure it out and they have it there, right? So in 85, they had it in Hollywood, Florida. It was 1 million degrees with relative humidity, 1 billion. In 83, it was in Pasadena. Do you know how hot it is in Pasadena in August? 
high. So every day is triple digits, every day, in Pasadena and in Hollywood, Florida. Mm -hmm. Also, I didn't go to this, but I'm not kidding. It's not a joke. I'm going to say 1978, and I could be like 10 years off. The U.S. Open was in Phoenix. I'm scared thinking about it. Now, we got Karen here. Karen, have you been to Phoenix in August? No. Yeah, don't do that. You know how you always say you're cold? Yeah. You're not going to say you're cold. I like it hot. No, no, you don't like it that hot. No, no. no, you, no. I like to sweat a little You don't bit. like when it's 118 degrees. You don't like it. Probably not. Nobody no, likes like it. it now, now, this is not a joke. Anybody who's been to Phoenix will back me up. Hey, try not to learn. Watch, watch this backing up on the... You waiting for the backup? I back am, up? but I'm trying to say hey to people. Hey, frankly, go to yeah, yeah. email. What, thanks, Shawang, S.C. Wang. In July and August in Phoenix, when people park their car, mm -hmm. this isn't a joke, they try to park in the shade. They park near a tree. I do they don't. Here. They don't. You do it here. Yeah. No. And also, they have these things in their car, which you, I've also seen here. But mm -hmm. everybody thinks where, you know, like they block the sun when they park. I used to have one of those. Yeah. This is shady. I'm in Phoenix. Yeah, 118, even worse than Kelvin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's too hot for me too. The heat makes it hard to breathe in Phoenix. Now, I was in Phoenix. Every year in the summer, because they had chess camps and they hired me, I was also in, not Phoenix, in, it's next to Phoenix, to Tempe, right? Is Tempe next to Phoenix? Yeah, I think so. Anyway, that's Phoenix. Mm -hmm. We were driving, me and Randy, going to eat, and there was a guy jogging on the side of the road, and it was like 119. Squire says at least yeah. it's dry heat. That, 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 guy, that guy's alive probably. And when I was in Phoenix once, one of the summers I went, the radio was on because it was so long ago where there's a radio, right? And the guy said, this is the record for number of 110 plus days in succession in Phoenix. It was like 25, 25 days in a row, 110 plus. And when I was driving with somebody else, Robert Tanner, he said, my car's never said this temperature. His car said it was 124. He said, my car's never said that. Obviously, car's wrong, but he said it never said 124 before. <clears throat> then there was a guy I knew from Boston. I'll think of his name later in the stream. I can't think of it now. And he was big like me, but probably bigger. And he's from Boston. He moved to Phoenix for chess, and he doesn't have air conditioning in his car. And he's bigger than me. Okay, so I finished him off. I played bishop b6 check, mm -hmm. as was the style at the time. He played the only legal move. Then he played the only legal move again. He could block with his queen, but that would be shallow and pedantic. Now, I have several forced mates here, but I played this one. The reason is the only logical way to stop mate is rook a7. Mm -hmm. And then I play queen here mate because the rook's on a7. And then obviously he could play some crazy moves like queen b4 giving his queen away or king here giving all of his pieces away, etc. Queen takes g2. Yeah, so he resigned here. Hooray! Uh, yeah. Right, a lot, of, a, there's a lot of forced wins. Queen c7 is also good. And then, um, bishops, this is another win. This is a really silly win. Then you play here, because the queen's defending this, so you can't take the rook, and you're threatening that. And then if he takes that rook, this is me. It's stupid. Yeah. If you defend the mate this way, now you just take the queen with the mate, because that rook keeps blocking the king. It's weird how that happens. Anyway, I don't know if I played well. What I do know is this: these, that's good. Mm -hmm. that's very good. Okay, so bishop c6, and we have to delete this. I think I played really well this game based on what the engine was saying. This game I might have played in the high 90s because every move I made, the engine was like the number one move. So, 
Yeah, this was when I was 12 years and 11 months old. I had a really bad tournament, too, but I, this was a good game. The rest of the tournament I forgot because it was terrible. Frankly, terrible. And what I remember about that tournament, yay, 97.9. Mm -hmm. Pretty good for 12. And then he played 51. See, 1800s play 51 in slow chess, but on the internet, in three minutes, they play 96. Exactly. 